Hello Brownsburg High School, thanks for watching BHS TV. Today is Monday, August 21st. I'm Stella Waller. And I'm Camilleny, and here's what's going on at BHS. Anyone that received an application to join the National Art Honor Society, don't forget they are due to Mrs. Woodcock in C2201 or C2208 by this Friday. Please make sure your application is complete and on time to be considered for NAHS. The Quality Alliance will be meeting tomorrow, Tuesday, August 22nd, after school in room B2403, Mr. Padgett's room, until 4 p.m. All students are welcome to attend and learn more about this club dedicated to providing a safe space for all marginalized students. The Quality Alliance offers a student body support and celebrates diversity regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, disability, age, sex, identity, or orientation. If you have any questions, please see Mr. Padgett in, B in B2403. Interested in learning about digital animation, original character design, or plot development? Join in BHS Digital Animation Club for their call-out meeting on Tuesday, August 22nd, from 3 to 4 p.m. after school in room C2208. Reach out to Ms. Bereski with any questions. The History Club's next meeting will be on Wednesday, August 23rd. That meeting will take place in Ms. Crone's room, A2306. Please also sign up for their group on Schoology using the, use the access code on screen. That's how they communicate. You also you may also contact Ms. Crone at dcrone at brownsburg.k12.in.us. The first French club meeting of the year will take place on Thursday, August 24th in Madame Condone's room B1410 from 3 to 3.45 p.m. They will talk about activities for the year and the mystery of the macaron. All French students and those interested in Francophone culture are welcome to attend. Bulldogs for Life will have a call-out meeting on Thursday, August 24th. That meeting will take place in Mrs. Heldman's room C2308 at 7.10 a.m. And there will be cinnamon rolls and all, all are welcome. DECA will hold call-out meetings on Tuesday, August 29th. There will be one at 7.15 a.m. and another after school. They will take place in C1304 and are for both new and returning members. You only need to attend one of the meetings. See Mrs. Sablehaus or a DECA member with questions. Best Buddies Club will have a short call-out meeting on Thursday, August 31st, it will take place after school until 3.15 and A1-3.16. You can also check Parent Square or Student Square for all the info. Mark your calendars. The speech and debate team will be holding their call-out meeting Thursday, August 31st in Miss Burnham's room, B2-405, from 3 to 3.30. If you want to make new friends, show off your acting skills, make speeches about something you care about, and so much more. If you have any questions, ask a current member or see Miss B. Are you looking to travel during spring break 2025? Mrs. Moeller and Mr. Friedman will be taking a nine-day trip to Columbia. Highlights include horseback riding, snorkeling, visiting a coffee plantation, learning to salsa dance, hiking through national forests, visiting a local school, and many other exciting things. If you're interested in hearing more details about the trip, use the QR code to sign up for the informational being, meeting being held Thursday, August 24th in Mrs. Moeller's room, B2. 428 at 6.30 p.m. Please enter through door four and follow the arrows to her room. Feel free to stop by Mrs. Muller's room B2428 or Mr. Freeman's room B2402 if you have any, any questions. Did you know it's Riley week already? Yeah, I'm so excited. Me too. BHS TV's Baloo Owulabi has gathered some information for us about this special week. Riley week just started, so I want to get some more information about Riley week and what is it about. Right. Riley Week is important because it shows BHS's support for the Riley kids in Riley's Children's Hospital. It's a really important week for both students and teachers to combine as a school to help a greater cause and to be able to donate money to these kids who are in need. It's important because we want to raise money for the children and we do that a lot by getting participation for school and getting donations obviously. The spirit day this week are PJ on Monday, Twins Day on Tuesday, Walking Wednesday on Wednesday, White Line on Thursday, and Red Out on Friday. And please don't forget that Riley shirt will be sold down in lunches for $12 every day. Riley Week is important because we need people to participate in the Spirit Days. You can participate in Riley Week Spirit Days by wearing your Spirit Days to school and games. It's a week Spirit Day, so we have Spirit Days throughout the week and wearing a lot of red on Friday. Um, this year, Student Council has a lot of new things planned for Riley Week. Not only do we have the Spirit Day every single day as usual, but we also have some fundraising opportunities in lunch. The site is online live right now if you want to start donating as soon as today. Um, our goal is about 23000 to beat last year's goal of 21000 and Student Council is really excited to show you guys what we have planned. Make sure to donate and participate in the Riley Day as it goes to a great cause. And thank you to all those who are doing that. Bolivar Defoe Wallaby, 
BHS TV. Thanks, Baloo. I'm so excited to participate in these Spirit Days. Now it's time for sports. Hey, Eli, what do you have for us today? Hey, guys, it was a very busy weekend with almost all of our fall sports teams in action, so let's get to it. Let's get things started with the football team who got their regular season underway traveling to Fort Wayne Bishop Dwanger on Friday night. The Dogs came out hot on their way to a 51-7 victory over the Saints. On the first play of the game, Garrett Sherrill broke a couple tackles and went 80 yards for a touchdown. Sherrill finished the night with three touchdowns and 223 yards rushing. Jake Dunn had a nice night in his first start at quarterback, throwing for 155 yards and two touchdowns. Oscar Fry and Joshua Stevens each had a passing touchdown also. Caden Allinger led the receiving core with 99 yards and a touchdown. Corey Smith, David Pearson, and Trey Brown all had receiving touchdowns as well. On defense, Jacob Volk had two sacks and Mason Kiefer and Jameer Pendleton each had one sack. Griffin Simpson at an interception. Nice job, guys. The Dogs will host second-ranked Cathedral on Friday. The JV team hosted Bishop Dwinger on Saturday and got a 28-0 win. Yosua Stevens had four passing touchdowns in the game, and Avon Robinson had two receiving touchdowns. Jameer Pendleton grabbed an interception for the defense. Nice job. The freshman team defeated the Saints 24-8. Chance Adams had a prompt return for a touchdown. Brady Luce forced a safety on defense and scored two rushing touchdowns on offense. Jaden Rose had a sack and a forced fumble. Both the JV and freshman will take on the Cathedral on Saturday. The cross-country teams got their seasons underway on Saturday when they hosted the four-way 4K. The girls finished with 27 points to take first place. Scout Newman finished first overall, McKenzie Steele was second overall. McKenzie Williams, Savannah Dyer, and Elise Kugel were 7th, 8th, and 9th on the day. It was a great first race of the season for the team. The boys were able to edge out Fishers by one point to take first place on the day. Ian Baker was the leading dog and finished 3rd overall. Brandon Haas was 6th overall and Sergio Khan was 8th. Gavin Nelson finished 20th. Congrats, guys. Both teams will take part in the Avon Hokum Carom on Saturday. Good luck. The girls' golf team is at the Mooresville Invitational on Saturday. The Invitational was a best ball challenge, and the dogs team of Maddie Campbell and Adelina Sago shot a 68 to finish first in their flight. Brenna Fruits and Ashley Dixon shot a 73 and were also first in their flight. Brooke Anderson and Anna Sinclair shot a 77 and were second in their flight. Nice job, ladies. They are back on the links Thursday hosting Zionsville and Westfield at West Chase. The JV team was at Crawfordsville Country Club for the Mountie Invitational, and the dogs took first place shooting a 351. Josie Campbell led the way with an 85, which was good enough for third overall. Lexi Kelly had an 86, Anna Grace Detline had an 89, and Abby Hatfield had a 91. Elle McCulloch had a 98. The boys' tennis team was back on the court on Friday night when they traveled to North Central. The dogs were able to narrowly defeat the Panthers 3-2 in the match. Hank Giles had a great match at number two singles, winning 6-1 and 6-4. Levi Peets also played well, winning his second set in a 7-5 tiebreaker. Ethan Kugel and Connor Certain clinched the match for the dogs at number two doubles, winning their third set 6-2. Congrats, guys. They're back at it tomorrow night hosting Westfield. The boys' soccer teams hosted New Palestine on Saturday. The dogs had a great day and earned a 5-0 victory over the Dragons. Grant Porath and Weston Bradley had two goals and an assist each. Caden Steckel and Talon Collier combined for a shutout and goal. Micah Eldridge had a goal for the dogs. Nice job. The JV team also had a nice day, earning an 8-0 victory. Sam Caswell led the dogs with four goals and an assist. Eve Golsey had an amazing goal in the match. Both the JV and varsity will travel to Hamilton Southeastern tomorrow. Good luck. The JV white team played a close match in North Central on Saturday, but came up one goal short. Keelan Boswell had the dog's goal, and Merrick Dutkowski played great defense. The girls' soccer teams traveled to Park Tudor on Saturday. The varsity earned a 1-0 victory over the Panthers. Natalie Hay had the only goal of the match, and Ella Hansen earned a shutout in the net. Nice job, ladies. The JV team earned a 3-0 victory. Claire Miller and Marin Steckel combined for a shutout and goal. The back line had some great defensive play in the match. Both teams will host Tri-West tonight for Hall of Fame night. Good luck. The girls' JV white team defeated Park Tudor 7-0. Issa 2 Barry had a hat trick in the match. Lauren Caperton and Tatum Carrington had two goals each. Brianna Noblet had some outstanding defensive play. The JV white will host HSC on Wednesday. Anyone wanting to try out for the baseball team this school year, there will be a mandatory call-out meeting on Tuesday, August 22nd, after school in the main cafeteria until 3.30. Fall and winter workouts will be discussed. Fall athletes do not need to attend the meeting. The softball team will have a call-out meeting for anyone interested in being on this team this spring. That meeting will take place after school on Tuesday, August 22nd in Coach Hiss's classroom A1201. And good luck to everyone in action this week. Back over to you guys. Thanks, Eli. That's all, that's all we've got for you today, BHS. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. We will see you on Wednesday.